Welcome back to Let's Talk. I'm your host, Chad Landers, and we're talking hoops on the program today. One of my favorite sports to chat about. Coming up next on the show, another baller that was one of my favorites to cover during his high school run. This Baron comes in at number five on the boys' countdown of our 11 of the last 20 boys' basketball list. One of the all-time highest-scoring players in Mannheim Central history. Let's welcome to the show Mannheim Central grad Matt Walsh. Matt, hey pal, how are you? Thanks for coming on Let's Talk. Very happy to have you here on the show. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on, Chad. Definitely uh, good to, to talk to you again, for sure. Yeah, I know. It's only been a few years since you uh, were in high school, but uh, we like to have everybody fill, fill us in. What are you up to these days? Uh, well, um, you know, I, I graduated, um, you know, this year, so just got done with uh, college. So just adjusting. I'm working as a recruiter right now, and then I'm also uh, an assistant coach for uh, Elizabethtown College. So um, got some good stuff going on. All right, so a little local there. That's kind of cool. Uh, yeah. well, well, of course, we have you on to talk about basketball. And uh, over the summer, we ran this series called 11 of the Last 20. And uh, we did all the sports that we cover here. And when it came to boys basketball, our countdown, you landed at number five. Now, it was a tough list to get mm -hmm. on, especially that top three. It was amazing. How are you feeling about coming in at number five? Would you like to move up a little bit at all? <laughs> well, obviously, in my opinion, I should be number one. <laughs> but, I mean, I know that can't be everybody's opinion. So, um, no, it felt good to, to, to be number five for sure. There's a lot of great basketball players on that list, including some that I'm, you know, very close with, as I'm sure you're aware with, you know, Tucker and Taylor, you know, both being in the top five as well. So uh, it was definitely cool to see that for sure. Um, you know, three of us from the same couple of years getting on the same uh, list. Yeah, it was fun to do. And it was fun to hear the, the stories from the coaches, too, who really put it in great perspective. We had so much fun with that. And people can check that out on YouTube if they want to see that episode. Now, let's talk about you. Your junior and senior years at Mannheim Central were some of the most successful in the program history. Uh, and I got to cover it about seven years ago. <laughs> and even I forgot how good you guys were. I said that to you before we got mm -hmm. on here. You guys were back-to-back -back Section 3 champs. You were dominant at times. Uh, mm -hmm. What was it like playing in those two final years of your high school career? Oh, it was awesome, man. It, it's, it's what everybody dreams about, you know, when you get to you know, play at the high school level or at the college level. You just dream about being on a winning team that's, you know, setting records and doing a bunch of great stuff. And I had a bunch of great guys with me that, that made it a lot easier for us to, to do that well. You know, we were, we were stacked. Uh, that, that's pretty much how I can put it. Um, and it felt really good. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, so let's talk about your junior year. 2013 to 2014, uh, Barons had a 19 game winning streak in the middle of that there. So obviously you guys were on a roll. We covered it a lot here at Blue Ridge. Uh, and one of your most memorable games in that year, the LL League playoffs, Mannheim Central versus JP McCaskey. You had to drop 24 points in that game to get the win. Uh, there was some crazy stuff happening there. What do you remember from that game? Well, I, I remember uh, we, we had it, uh, we were up pretty good early um, and uh, they, they made a comeback. I mean, they're, they're a good team, so they're going to do that. And we weren't prepared for it right away, but, you know, we ended up coming out with it. I just remember uh, Kobe, another guy that I'm actually, you know, pretty close with. I actually played with him a little bit this summer and fall as well. Um, you know, he just completely destroyed us in the fourth quarter. I think he had 24 in the fourth alone. So I had 24 in the game. He had 24 in the quarter. So we had to uh, deal with that. And that was, that was a lot, but it was, it was a really good game. The atmosphere was unbelievable. I think they had to let people sit in the stairwells because there wasn't enough seating and a standing room only. It was, it was a, a unreal atmosphere. Yeah. It was in your gym and it was packed and, and, and both fan bases were in there. And, and when it got close to the fourth quarter, it was electric. I'll never forget watching that back here in the station. Uh, so let's talk about your junior year some more, and we can't go any further when we talk about playoffs and not bring up the infamous Tanner Bernays game in the District 3 playoffs. Uh, do you remember the ending and kind of how that whole thing went down against West York? <laughs> so it's funny. Everyone asked me, you know, like that, you know, what, what, how did you feel when that happened? And to be honest, like it, it's all kind of a blur because it just happened so fast. It was like, you know, we go down, I got an and one, we went up one, you know, super excited about that. And then all of a sudden they come down and hit the, a ridiculous long three that, you know, we, we probably should have contested better, but it was a great shot. And all I remember is having, I think it was like 10 seconds left. And I was just like, I need to get the ball in bounds. We need to get up the court. And, uh, you know, Tony made the right play. He got it to an open guy and, you know, 
Um, you know, Tanner, he, he didn't have a lot of made threes on the year, but, um, you know, that was the one that really counted. And, you know, we had full trust in him to, to shoot that shot. That's why Tony gave it to him. And that's why, you know, we were all so excited when he made it because we knew, you know, like that was what we'd been preparing for. You guys inbounded it quick, outlet up the floor. Uh, and yeah, Tanner Bernice is kind of just standing behind the three-point line. Time's running down. You didn't need a three-pointer, but he had to get the ball up. Uh, you know, when it's going through the air, what were you thinking? And then you guys, it was such an emotional explosion afterwards. Uh, what did you guys get to talk about? Um, so it's funny enough, um, you know, like I said, Tanner, not, not necessarily known as a three-point shooter, especially in high school. Um, but, you know, after practices, we would play, you know, shooting games from three. We'd have shooting contests and, you know, me and, and Taylor Funk and uh, actually Coach Fisher would participate with us as well. And funny enough, actually, Tanner won those competitions quite a bit. He just never really shot threes in games that much. Uh, so when that ball was in the air, you know, I just flash back to all of the, the drills and all the fun stuff that we did after practice. And that's, that's kind of what, why we did that sort of thing. And so as soon as it's in the air, you know, all we're doing is praying that it goes in and it went in and uh, you know, I, I don't think I've ever felt a feeling quite like that um, ever playing in a basketball game. Um, it was, it was pretty incredible. All, actually this past year with uh, Hobart, we had something pretty similar to that, which I would say right. is the closest thing to, to that feeling I've ever had. Awesome. Uh, all right. Well, you guys win there. You win another game. You get to the district championship that year. And then you play Susquehanna Township. They had a great, a great team in the finals, and they beat you guys. What did it mean to get there, though, to the finals? And uh, what was it, you know, the feeling afterwards? Uh, I mean, I mean, you just feel blessed to be there. I mean, especially coming from a, a program like Mannheim, who doesn't necessarily have the best basketball history as far as, um, you know, winning and going to the Giants Center. Actually, I think that was our first year that we ever got to the Giants Center as a as a, a program. So that was, you know, one thing. And then to get to the district championship was amazing. And to have the opportunity to play a team like Susquehanna Township, who I believe that year actually went to the state semis or the finals. It was one of the two. They, they were a really, really good team that year. So just getting to play them was awesome. And, and seeing kind of how we stacked up to the top tier competition, you know, in our area was definitely great as well. Obviously, you're disappointed when you lose. But, um, yeah. you know, getting there, that was the first step. That was, you know, that was like, wow, you know, we are good enough to, to kind of be, you know, to, in this position. Okay, so how do we take that then into the off season? Your senior year's coming up. You're coming back. Taylor Funk's coming back. A lot of the guys are coming back. How good did you think the team could be then in your senior year? Um, you know, we had full confidence in our team that year. I mean, we did it the year before, and and we didn't even have uh, Tony Stafiri for, for, I would say, three quarters of the year, I think. Uh, he, he might have came back for the last couple regular season games. Um, you know, he had that collarbone injury from football. So, you know, we got him back and then, you know, Funk a year older. And, you know, that one year made such a huge difference in Funk's game, too. I mean, we saw that immediately. Um, and, you know, we just knew that we had what it took to, to, to go far, you know, like we did the year before, maybe even a little farther. Uh, but we knew that, you know, it wasn't going to just happen. You know, we had to, had to focus, you know, we had to prep, we had to be ready for each and every game. And, you know, honestly, we weren't ready for each and every game. And there were times where it, where it uh, you know, hurt us a little bit. But, you know, we got it together towards the end of the year. And we went on a, another big win streak, won the section. And, um, you know, that was just kind of it. You know, we realized that we had to prepare, even though we were all better and our team was going to be better. We still had to prepare because every other team was getting better, too. Well, you did make it seem like you had it all together because there was, I think, a 21 game winning streak in the middle of that season. Uh, mm -hmm. Also in that season, some pretty cool classic games against Tucker Lesko and the Cacalico <laughs> Eagles. Uh, what was it like having your high school career and his intertwined, especially some of those games uh, specifically January 30th, 2015. It was an overtime classic, uh, which you guys beat Cacalico on their floor. Yeah, um, <laughs> that game was was awesome too. Uh, that, that atmosphere was also just crazy. Um, I don't think I've ever been in a gym that shook quite that much when, <laughs> when uh, the crowd was cheering. Um, it was a crazy atmosphere. It was, it was also like really cool to just play against Tuck. Um, you know, I've known him since I was in fifth grade. He was in fourth grade. So, you know, we have a lot of uh, history just from playing with each other. And so playing against him was definitely interesting. Uh, it was kind of hard to, you know, not like him because, you know, I've known him for so long. But, um, you know, it was, I'm glad we came out on top. It was a really, really close game. And, uh, you know, Tucker and them, they played their played their butts off. And, and from what I remember, I don't think that there was anything really on the line from a section standpoint. I think it was just because our two teams were that competitive with each other that we just both wanted to win that badly, which made it made it even cooler, I think. 
I do believe, I think you guys had the section locked up or something, and I think you were already in leagues and districts. So really, you're right, didn't have much on the line, but it was pride, and it was so many good athletes and a cool yeah. rivalry. I think really the rivalry started to grow at that point, and it still today is an amazing one. We just had two buzzer beaters uh, right. this past season. So, yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun, to, and you guys have a lot to do with that starting. Um, let's talk about that, that playoff run in your senior year. You guys go into the leagues. Pretty good team, but you fall to Cedar Crest. Then you get into districts, pretty good team. You fall to Bishop McDevitt. You get into states, and you win that game against Wilkes-Barre GAR. So what was your experience like in the playoffs in your senior year? How would you kind of uh, describe that to us? Um, you know, we didn't do what we wanted to do. Obviously, you know, uh, we were, we thought we were good enough to win, you know, not only the league championship, but, you know, districts as well. We felt like we we were primed to do that. But, you know, we just ran into some really good teams. You know, Cedar Crest, uh, that whole atmosphere for that game was crazy too. Um, you know, and it, that was a really fun game to play in. But, again, didn't, didn't come out with the uh, outcome that we wanted. Um, Bishop McDevitt, I mean, they were just a, a beast of a team. Um, you know, I've known Malik for a while as well, Malik Gantz. Um, and he just uh, really just destroyed us. We didn't really have a matchup for him or um, I think it was Dylan. Um, you know, he, he was he was really good, too. They were a really tough team. And uh, playing guard, that game was ugly from what I remember. I think the, the final score was like 36 to 40 or something along those lines. So not a pretty game. But, you know, that's why, you know, you work all year. We were pride on our defense. We had our pride in our defense. So, um, you know, that was kind of the key that, that fit our style a little bit um, as well. I remember that game in States. You, it was a long trip up to Wilkes-Barre. Very low scoring, as you said. Uh, I think there was snow everywhere. It was, uh, it was a funky day. And, uh, but you guys got that win, which was, was pretty cool. Uh, before we let you go, we got to talk about your college career. You pick Hobart, Hobart College. Eventually, Tucker Lesko from Cacalico follows you up there. Uh, had to be pretty cool to play with him. Both you guys, very good scorers in high school. You both could shoot in college. Uh, and then, of course, you had the injuries there as well. Break down your college experience for us. What was it like? Yeah, so so I'm gonna start. You know, I I always like to to make this um, distinction here. Uh, you know, Tucker, I don't think followed me to Hobart. You know, <laughs> he made his own decision. You know, he had a lot of different options, and he chose Hobart because he felt that's where he was gonna be successful. He didn't choose it because because of me. I'm sure I didn't hurt. You know, the fact that I was there, but uh, I don't want to make it seem like I was the reason he chose it. Um, so that was number one. But my college career, you know, uh, I, I started out. It was uh, we had a lot of young guys. It was just getting used to college basketball. It's a lot more physical. It's a lot faster. Um, so we kind of grew. And, you know, as I was coming into, you know, the best part of my career, I was playing awesome my junior year. Um, you know, I went down with a knee knee injury there, got surgery on it. And then unfortunately, you know, tore it again before I got to play my senior year. Um, so I didn't really get to play my senior year. I played half my junior year. Um, and then, you know, this this past year was awesome. You know, we, we made school history this past year. So it kind of worked out uh, in a weird way. You know, I got injured you know, a couple of times and obviously you don't want to get injured, but it did work out. I got to, you know, have a, a great experience with the team this past year. And I had great experiences, even though I wasn't playing with the team, you know, all the guys were super supportive. And, you know, although you, you wish you'd never get injured, you know, you, you kind of just roll with the punches and it's taught me a lot more um, than I, than I ever expected it to just, you know, perseverance and being able to, come back and even play at all in a fifth year after you know two significant uh, knee injuries like that I was proud of myself for just being able to do that all right well yeah some tough breaks there for sure I'm glad you came on thank you so much and uh, enjoyed catching up enjoyed seeing you here before the holidays make sure you have a great holiday keep safe and uh, we'll talk to you again soon Matt all right sounds great Chad I appreciate it all righty another show in the books there and I can safely say this will actually be our final episode of 2020. Been an absolute pleasure to bring back Let's Talk for you, share the stories and the memories with all of you at home. Thanks so much for tuning in all year long. Thank you to Abby Hauk and Matt Walsh for stopping by to share their memories. I'm your host, Chad Landers. Have a happy new year. Please stay safe and healthy over the holidays and come back again in 2021 for more conversations on a brand new episode of Let's Talk.